So periodic trend, uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this worksheet and I'm going to review everything that we've done in chapter 5. So we had six things that we really focused on in chapter 5 and we had atomic radii, ionic radii, valence electrons, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. Now, when you are watching this, this is while I am not in class, um, and so hopefully you can get this done, and then if you don't get it done in class, please finish watching it at home, and then when I come back to school on Monday, excuse me, we're going to talk about it, or we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to do the other side of this. So there are six of them, but you're only required to do the three on the front uh, for this particular section. So there's some things that I want to talk about. Um, in this and this is a really good way to study once we're finished with this I'm like oh I get a lot of these things now so again you don't you can't study this exclusively but it is a good study tool so let's look at the first one the first we're going to talk about is atomic radii so what we're going to do is we're going to define the terms in the define the term box then we're going to talk about increase decrease smaller bigger and why and the left to right and up and down so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define this term okay so the definition in your notes if you want to look it up is half the distance half the distance between the nuclei of two identically bonded atoms together. The reason the, it's not writing, the pen has frozen on me. So give me just one second. Hopefully it'll kick back into gear. So again, one more time, define the term. It is half the distance between the nuclei of two identical atoms bonded together. Wait, still waiting on the pen. Okay, so I guess I could just kind of talk about this. Now, if you know that you were in geometry class and they asked you to define a radius, you know that it is half the distance of the circle. So it's halfway across um, the circle. So, again, you can still relate that to an atom because it is a circle. However, the big problem with this is does an atom have a defined end? Does it have a point where you can say, yep, there's the end of this thing. I can look at it. I can point at it. I know exactly where it ends. No. Okay. The reason we know that is because electrons don't travel in perfect little circles. Excuse me. Perfect little circles. They travel in something called orbitals. Well, since they travel in orbitals, it's kind of this area that we think it is in. And so we're not quite sure where the uh, electron is exactly located. Um, and so we kind of have to come up with this. We ha they had to figure out a way to create this atomic radius. So the way they did it is just what exactly what the definition says. They took two atoms of the exact same kind. So we can just pretend and let's just say hydrogen atoms because that's a good way to think about it. Um, that way it kind of lessens the load of, of trying to memorize the fact. So again, let me finish writing this so I can, so I can think. So two pen is really slow today guys I'm sorry and if it's lagging in the video um, I wish there was something I could do excuse me of identical I'm just messing all kind of sorts up today guys uh, again I'm sorry I'm recording this on a Thursday afternoon and I'm not gonna be here tomorrow so just kind of bear with me Okay, so for the fifth time, define the term atomic radii. Half the distance between the nuclei of two identical atoms bonded together. So what I want to do is I just kind of want to draw this, and I'm doing dots just to kind of make an effect. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that that is one atom, and we're going to color this uh, the center part in. We're going to say that is the nucleus, and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of overlap these two things and then we're going to draw the other nucleus inside of the circle
Okay. And so the atomic radius, is if you drew a line connecting the two nuclei, it would be half the distance. So from one half, this is the A R or the atomic radius, if you will. It's half the distance. One thing I want you to actually know about this is the unit, okay? The unit it is measured in is the picometer. And I think I told you this in your notes, but again, it's just something that whenever you're seeing, you can uh, come back and look at this. And that is one times 10 to the negative 12th meters. Really, really, really small, okay? The picometer, make sure you know that that is what it is. All right, so now let's talk about the trend. I'm just gonna write the trend in red and then I'm going to explain it um, in, in purple. So this is kind of what I wanna do every single time. The trend is, is that it gets smaller as you go left to right and it gets larger or bigger, however you wanna say it, it gets larger as you go down a column. Okay, so that is the trend. So remember what you have to do. You have to tell me what happens and then why it happens. All right. So here's the kicker to all of this. As you move left to right, one of the big things is, is that you are on the same energy level, okay? So if you're on the second energy level, which is the second period, you remember you have 2s and p, okay? 2s and 2p, so you're still on the second energy level. The rings are not getting any larger. The, the rings are staying the same size. All you're doing is putting more electrons on those rings, okay? But what is that all and powerful, magical word that we have been talking about so often? This comes into play, and that is ZEP. And so what I'm gonna do, and this is again, something that we're gonna have to know uh, um, a lot about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write it up here. And I told you the beginning of this, this chapter, I said I'm gonna say this word about 150,000 times, and I probably have at this point. All right, so what this is, is the effective You're probably going to want some space underneath this because i got a few things I want to write underneath this. The effective nuclear... Come on, pen. Effective nuclear charge. All right. And so what does that mean? Is Really, is it's talking about the nucleus in general. How powerful is that thing? So the way I kind of define this is how many protons in the nucleus in the nucleus guys I'm sorry this pen is just is, is not working very well today nucleus are pulling on the electrons in the orbitals. Okay. So that is the key right there, is how many electrons in the nucleus, again this is nucleus, are pulling on those electrons out there in that orbital. All right, so again this effective nuclear charge. So what happens is since you are on this exact same energy level, your ZEF, you're going to have more as you go across, you're going to have more protons to pull on more electrons. And again, and it's just like I kind of gave you the example in class. If I have, and again, what I, what I mean by this is lithium is in is 2p1, and it has three protons, and it has three electrons, versus in the exact same period, neon. And neon is going to have 10 protons, and it's going to have 10 electrons. But remember, it has the exact same number of rings. It has two rings. Well, if you've got three pulling on something, or you've got 10 pulling on something, what's well, going to win? Well, naturally, you should understand that 10 is going to be a lot stronger than three, as long as the sizes are the same, and the sizes are the same. So what you could actually come in here and put is the same energy level means the same size. Let me change that color to black so you can read it. Means same size. Okay. However, I know that it says smaller. 
it is in essence going to get smaller, but the rings are the same number. Okay, so the ZEF is going to take those protons and those electrons and it's going to pull it in a little bit tighter. All right, so essentially the protons are pulling tighter on those rings. Okay, protons pull harder on rings. Pull harder on the rings. And again, what is a ring? Hopefully you know by now it is an orbital. If you don't, write orbital under that. Okay, so that takes care of left to right. Now let's talk about it as it goes down a column. Well, we've already said that it gets larger. So why does it get larger? Well, guess what? If you're going across, it's the same energy level. This time as you go down, you're starting to get on different energy levels. Okay, well, what does that mean for this atom? Well, since you have different energy levels, So different energy levels. So what that means is, is since you have different energy levels, that means that you're going to have more electrons. Well, when you have more electrons, what does that mean? You have more space taken up, okay? More space is used, okay? So different energy levels means you have more electrons, which means you have more um, space used. And so, in essence, what I'm really getting to is the fact that you have more orbitals. And again, the way we can easily remember this is you're going to have more rings, if you like the word rings, okay? But technically, you are adding orbitals every single time you go down, okay? So, what is a good way to think about this? Well, lithium has three protons, Okay, and then it has three electrons. And then I'm going to go down to the sixth period. I'm going to go to uh, cesium, CS. Well, it's got 55 of both of those. Okay, so lithium versus cesium. So it's going to have 55 protons and electrons. Well, can 55 uh, protons and electrons fit in the exact same space as three can fit in? Absolutely not. Okay, so you have to account for that size difference. Okay, so that is atomic radii. Hopefully you kind of have a just, of, a just of what's going on here and how this is going to work, and hopefully that has helped you a little bit. All right, so let's move on to ionic radii. I'm going to clear the board, pause it, and move it up to the next one. Okay, so let's talk about ionic radii. Well, the first thing we need to know is what in the heck is an ion? All right, well, hopefully you know this by now. An ion is an atom that has gained or lost what? That has gained or lost something. Okay, if you said an electron, then you are correct. So it has gained or lost an electron. That is the key there. Now, there are two types, there are two types of ions, and hopefully you remember these two types. The first one is the cat ion, okay? And what does it do with its electrons? It's going to lose electrons. And what does that make its sign? Hopefully you remember a cation is positive. All right, so what is the opposite of that? We have the anion, okay, or a negative ion. So what is it going to do with electrons? It's going to gain them, okay? It's going to gain electrons, and what is its sign going to be? It's going to be negative. So again, an easy way to remember these things is a negative ion, and cation has that positive-looking plus T right there in the center. Okay, so that is what we're talking about. So one other little thing, and, and I've kind of I've used my space wrong here, but it, it, it's okay. Um, one thing that I do want you to grasp and I want you to understand are that cations 
are going to be metals. This is something really, really, really important. Cations are going to be metals. And, and in that term, I told you this in your notes, it's going to be group one, group two, the transition. Okay, and then I individualize three of them. And, and I'm going to explain why again. Aluminum, tin, and lead. Well, the reason I individualize those three is because they're not in group one, they're not in group two, they're not in the D block where the transition metals are, but they are still metals and they are in the P block. Now, there are other metals than these three, gallium, indium, thallium, and bismuth. They're all metals. However, we rarely, rarely, rarely see them. But aluminum, tin, lead, you use every single day. Okay, the next thing, the anion. Okay, all right, the anion, these are going to be non-metals. Okay, these are going to be non-metals. And what these are is groups um, 15 through 18. Groups 15 through 18, those are going to be your, um, <clears throat> your non-metals. One of the uh, one more little thing that I want to point out, cations. We've already said right here, lose electrons. Well, when you lose an electron, what happens to your size? Your size will go down because what's happened when you lose an electron? You drop an orbital. You drop a ring. Okay, so there you lose an orbital is the reason your size drops. Okay, so you lose an orbital. Now, so what's the opposite of that? Now, technically, anions aren't really going to gain any size. And the reason why they're not going to gain any size is all they're doing is adding an electron to an orbital that already exists. So kind of technically, it, you would think it would get a little bigger. However, it does not. And the reason I say that, let's just look at fluorine. Okay, It's got two in its first ring, and then it's got seven in its second ring. Well, how many does it gain? Well, if it gains one electron, did it get any bigger? No, it absolutely did not get any bigger. Why? Well, because it already had that ring there. So you're not gaining any size. Okay, so that's just something that I kind of want to mention to you. All right, so let's talk about trends. All right. <clears throat> Technically, what I, what I want you to know is the cation and the anion, um, let's, 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 let's change this. Okay, the way I want to say it is it gets smaller as you go left to right. It gets smaller as you go left to right. And there's not really any other way to say it except number one, the cations are going to lose an orbital. Okay, And then the anions, even though they are excuse me, gaining, gaining an electron, you're still technically going to get, you're going to be smaller within the same group. So even though lithium is going to lose and get down to um, to two, what happens is the, the fluorine still, when it's charged, is going to be a little bit smaller because it still has those um, nine electrons pulling on the center. So it's, it's still going to technically get a little bit smaller. All right. Well, what's going to happen as you go down a group? Well, here's some good news. It is going to increase. Okay. It is going to um, increase or get larger, however you want to put this. I know I wrote larger in the one above it, so larger is fine. Okay, and this is the best news of the day. The reason it gets larger is the same reason as above. The same reason as atomic. Okay, same reason. So we're not going to have to write all that again. So again, it's you adding more electrons, you're adding more energy levels, you're adding more orbitals, so it takes up more space. That's kind of what I want you to get. The same reason as atomic radii. So hopefully that one wasn't bad. Hopefully that one was uh, fairly simple. Okay, and to me, honestly, this next one is the easiest. Valence electrons. I'm going to pause the video one more time. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to move it up so I can write in that space. Okay, 
So let's talk about valence electrons. First of all, let's define a valence electron. Okay, a valence electron is the electron in the sorry about the pen guys and I hope the video is not lagging uh, there's a high potential for some reason because normally when my pen lags like this the video lags even more um, but again just kind of stay with me hopefully you can kind of bounce back and forth if you need to write it and re-listen to it that is perfectly fine but again the valence electron is the electron in the outermost energy level okay the outermost energy level yeah All right. another little fact that I want you to know about the valence electrons is these things allow excuse me don't put that right there please erase that I'm gonna I need to put something else right there all right let's try this again um, these allow for chemical bonding. These are the electrons that are actually used when atoms bond together. Okay, so you really need to know that. All right, another good thing um, that's a very simple topic is the group numbers correspond to the valence number of electrons. So what I want to do, what I want you to do is I want you to write those in. Okay, so group one has one valence electron. Group two has two. Okay, and this is where it's going to kind of get strange. And, and I'm doing this in different color for reason. Group 13. Now, I know what you're thinking. Group 13, why did he skip that? Look at boron on the periodic table. That's, that's where we're talking about. Group 13. That has three valence electrons. So here's what I really need you to also understand. We skip the D block or skip the transition metals. Now, I'm not going to tell you why. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know that fact. And here's something that I will also tell you the truth. I, in my, all my years of, of chemistry and my learning, I have never learned or heard or talked about valence electrons for the D block, ever. So if I've never heard it, there's no reason for you to ever hear about it, okay? All right, so let's just kind of t continue with this trend. All right, group 14 has four, and this is carbon. Okay, group 14 has four. Group 15 has five, and group 16 has six, and of course you know what that leaves us, and that is group 17 has seven. Okay, all right. Um, there's one more thing that I want to add to this, and, and hopefully you got enough room to do it, and I'm going to do it in brown, and that is the charge. Now, the charge necessarily doesn't, but it does have something to do with the valence electrons, and this is just something for you to, because you're going to have to know it next chapter anyways, okay? So group one has a plus one, excuse me, let me do this my way. I wasn't thinking there for a second. Group one has a one plus charge, okay? Group two has a two plus charge. And remember, what do we do with the D block? We skip it. And again, and the reason why is because the transition metals, they transition. They can change. They have different charges. Is a plus, did that again, excuse me, I'm not thinking, is a three plus. And this is the one where it gets kind of weird, and hopefully you, you remember this. Group 14, remember how many valence electrons do they want? Well, they want eight. Well, four is right smack dab in the middle. So group 14 actually can go both ways. It is a plus or a minus four. It can actually do both. And remember, this is where the magical carbon atom is, and that's why it has its own entire branch of chemistry devoted to itself is because of that reason. Okay, all right, back to the beginning. Or excuse me, uh, back, continue going. So group 13, excuse me, group 15, this is when it starts to go back down. It is a three negative. Okay, well, why is that the case? Well, it has five valence electrons. How many does it want? It needs three more. So if you gain three electrons, you get to your 18. So that is why. So what we're ended up trying to do is trying to add up to 18, okay? So what do you think group 16 has? Well, good news for group 16 is it's two negative. And then finally, the one we already know, the halogens, group 17, is equal to one negative, okay? So those are your charges. 
All right, so the final thing. Here we go. What happens as you go left to right? Well, obviously, we just did that. It increases. Okay? The valence number of electrons increase. Okay? Well, again, why? There are more electrons added every single time. More electrons added to the orbital. Okay, more electrons added to the orbital. And this next one, what happens is you go down a column from top to bottom. This is the only one that's like this on this entire sheet, but it's the easiest. Notice what I have done. All of group one had one. All of group two had two. All of group 13 had three. So if I'm looking within that group, so look at group one, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. What is any different between lithium and sodium in the number of valence electrons? There are none. So what happens to that value as you go down? Stays the same. Okay. This is the only one on this entire chart that you can do this. And you really make sure you know this because I'm pretty sure, and you know since it's the only oddball out, there is a high likelihood that you'll probably see that again. All right, so that is the whole entire front of this worksheet. It sh hopefully should not have taken you very long. Very simple. Um, Monday when I get back, we're going to do ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. Now, those are going to take a little bit longer, a little more discussing, a little more talking. Um, but again, I just wanted you to go ahead and have this so you can understand exactly what we're going to do. All right, so I hope this was good for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and I'll see you guys Monday.